All right guys, um, today we're going to re be replacing an ABCS solenoid or a oil control valve or a spool valve. They're all the same thing. Um, basically I was getting a P0021 code on the on my cob and that has to do with your um, ABCS being over advanced. And uh, just to kind of clarify what ABCS is, it's what um, allows your timing on your cams to advance or retard um, and so you can advance your cams and, and get more dynamic compression and it actually helps your motor um, breathe and spool up turbos and um, it becomes more efficient it's it's not like VTEC it's not multiple cams it's uh, there's a spring in your uh, cam sprocket that spins as it gets oil pumped into it and uh, that's what basically allows your um, timing to advance so have a bad one of those. Um, so we're gonna swap that out. Um, actually, we're gonna swap both of them out just because I figured the other one's not far behind. Um, and we're gonna show you that process and how it's actually really simple uh, to do. It only takes like probably 10, 20 minutes. So enjoy. Um, so the AVCS solenoid is down here, uh, at least, okay, uh, let's back up. The f this motor is a, is a single AVCS. And what that means is the uh, intake cams both have AVCS. The exhaust cams do not. Um, the newer STIs have dual AVCS, so they have on the intake and the exhaust side. Um, but your legacy GTs and your WRXs, um, your WRX after 2008, will all be a single AVCS. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, so first of all, you need to remove anything that's gonna prevent you from getting to the solenoid. Now you'll have a battery probably in the way that you need to pull out. Pull out. This isn't a battery, uh, it's a catch can, but have a battery to pull out of the way. Um, and then, you know, anything else, hoses, um, if you have like, um, I don't know, anything going on, uh, fuel, fuel lines or anything, you gotta kind of work around those. So first thing I'm gonna do is work on getting my, um, this is my charge pipe for my intercooler out of the way. Right, next we've got our uh, front vacuum port for our PCV system uh, it goes on the head this one's kind of goofy because again I have a catch can but you gotta you gotta remove that to get clearance uh, for the valve to come out of this solenoid and I'll show you all that here in a second Start to get into where you can actually see it. It's where this blue plug is. It's blue, right? So pretty much all that holds this in is a 10 millimeter bolt. Um, so we're gonna just take our 10 millimeter, get it on there. Sometimes your AC lines don't want to cooperate. All right, that's really all there is to it. Now we're just gonna slide it right out. Um, the, there's a little bracket that it comes with and if you're having problems getting it out uh, take a flathead and, uh, there's a little you can see there's a line like where the, where the thing goes uh, into the hole you just twist there's a little rubber seal there that prevents it from leaking oil because these are oil controlled and Oh, there it is. There's our old one. And uh, you kind of test them. Like, it moves back and forth pretty easily. Uh, I have a new one right here. It's actually like if you test it, it's quite a bit harder to uh, move that spring. So, another thing you want to do is make sure that these are the same. Um, sometimes, you know, there's multiple kinds of AVCS. Like I mentioned, there's the dual ABCS ones, and they're actually, they can be different uh, links and things, so you want to make sure that they're the same, um, that your new part you're installing is going to work. Obviously, this one's a little different. It's got a different bracket, but it should work. Um, next step is it has this little O-ring seal. You just kind of want to take some oil. There's just enough on that solenoid. And just kind of coat that. 
these seem like they're oiled from the uh, manufacturer, but uh, you're gonna wanna do that regardless. And then you wipe your hand off. Okay, now you're gonna notice some oil spilling out from that port this thing goes into. So you just wanna clean that up. And plug it in. Get it back into your hole. And it just pops right in. Super simple. Now, if you're worried about contamination, like maybe you just rebuilt your motor, or something like that, it's not a bad idea to get a magnet and kind of check that port. And cause uh, like you just build a motor, you got little metal bits flying around. Um, sometimes they can get stuck in. Um, I actually popped these off earlier and did that. We'll go and check the other side just so you kind of look at it. Tighten that back down and that side's good to go. Um, so you just put whatever you had to take off back on and then continue to the other side. All right, so now we're going to do the uh, passenger side uh, for USDM vehicles, <laughs> the uh, right side. Um, and this is actually, uh, something you wanna know is when you're looking at your access port, it'll say ABCS left, ABCS right, and that is according to the driver. So um, if you're driving, it says right solenoid, which is P0011, and then left side is P0021. I might have that switch, uh, don't quote me on that. But it'll say right side, which is your right hand side. It's not a mechanics right, which would be looking at the motor and that side. Anyways, so we're gonna take this intake off. A um, few of the factory set, set up with the turbo inlet coming through here, and then that little S pipe and the air box. You may have to pop that air box out, which isn't always fun to do, um, but it, it only takes like five, 10 minutes. So um, it's not any more complicated. Uh, it's just really simple when you just have a big intake like this to take out. Yank this guy out. So it aside so Mickey doesn't get mad for me ruining his nice paint job that he put on there. All right, so the solenoid is right here, same spot. Um, and then actually we're gonna have to pull the vacuum line for our PCB, just like we did on the other side. Good clearance. Uh, that was not too hard to do. Um, I've got a bunch of boost lines and stuff in the way. You don't necessarily have all that. Um, but main thing you wanna do is, you know, get it clear so that you have enough clearance to back this guy out all the way. This blue plug again. And then here's the bolt that we're going to take out the nut. Here's the bolt. It's like a retard. Alright. Same thing like last time. I don't know if you can get a better show of that. It's a... Uh, you see the crack where it goes in and it's just as simple as getting a screwdriver in there. Just twisting. And it helps pop that. Uh, gasket out. Um, and this one, if I recall, is a little bit more of a challenge to get out because of the hoses. So there it is. We're going to undo our thing by pushing it down. Take that out. And then, just in case y'all need to know, part number 10921AA020. This isn't the one from the Subaru dealership, but it's a OEM equivalent. And I've not had any problems with any. Most of the equivalent ones. Alright, so once again, we're gonna. These seem to be pre oiled, but let's go ahead and do it. Oil it. This is 
slide it back in. That little snap is how you know. Plug that in and then get your vacuum line and then you can tighten up those clamp to keep that on. And put your bolt back in. Super simple. I think if you took this to the dealer, they'd probably charge you like a couple hundred bucks. So don't be that person. Do it yourself. Now, if this doesn't fix your code, there's a few problems. One is um, the oil fittings, which are on top of this hard line that go down into the AVCS solenoid. From the factory, they have banjo bolt screens in them. Um, these have been removed, but if you pull that banjo bolt out, there will be like a little screen um, to catch things. Um, and actually, Super sent out a bulletin like, hey, you should remove those screens because all they're doing is clogging your AVCS system. And that's bad. That's what causes a restriction of oil flow or a bad solenoid. Basically causes your timing to do wonky things when you don't want it to do it. The other thing is, and I see this on a lot of rebuilt cars, is... People spin a bearing, throw a rod, something like that, um, and they don't replace the cam gears. And they're like really difficult to clean. You get some kind of metal or anything in those. Um, you pretty much have to completely disassemble them, which is kind of a tricky process because there's a lot of mechanism in there that allows them to advance and hard timing. So um, if you've thrown a rod, or spun a bearing, done anything that's going to put metal into your motor, just replace them. It's going to cause you headaches down the road if you don't. Or I've seen a few people that know how to clean them and maybe they charge less than like the 200 bucks it is to buy a new one. Uh, but either way, you want to make sure you address that because um, that'll cause the same kind of issue uh, that you're getting with a failed ABCS solenoid. So that's pretty much it. We've Put everything back together, just gotta put the intake back on and test it and make sure our codes don't come back. Pretty simple.